Well, church, I'd like to welcome you to our 10th annual spring conference on the Holy Spirit. This is our final service. Our theme for the weekend has been by my spirit, taken from Zechariah 4, verse 6. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power. What is it? By my spirit, says the Lord. By my spirit, says the Lord. And so I'm so delighted that you could join us today. This is our theme. This is our heart's cry. Thank you for coming to church tonight. Thank you for being in the house of God. Thank you for worshiping together. Thank you for lifting up the name of Jesus. How many of you have been here at every service? Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night. Amen. I bless you in the Lord. God's going to do something in your life. He's going to stir you up to serve the Lord. We say together, greater works, Lord. Greater works. Greater works in Jesus' name. Well, P of C. Right before I share with you and uh, introduce our guest speaker, you know it, you know it. Would you just rest, sit in his presence, and just, would you just declare it with me? Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Not by might. Nor by power, but by my spirit, says this mountain, this mountain shall be removed. This mountain shall be removed. This mountain. Now, if you have a mountain, would you stand? If you have a mountain. You're praying for it to be removed. Sing it one more time. This mountain shall be removed. It's going to be removed. This mountain shall be removed. This mountain shall be removed by my... Oh, sing this part one more time. Now, now sing it prophetically in Jesus' name. This this mountain, this mountain shall be, shall be removed. This mountain shall be removed by my spear. Now, one last time, sing it with all your heart, this mountain. This mountain. church with just your voices come on one more time this mountain this mountain shall be removed this mountain this by my spirit says the Lord, would you give him praise, church? This mountain shall be. This mountain shall be. This mountain shall be removed. Before you're seated, Father, I pray that every mountain would be removed. Every barrier would be broken. Every high thing would be cast down. Every stronghold would be torn down. Every obstacle would be put aside. The crooked path would be made straight. This mountain shall be removed. By my spirit, says the Lord, I pray it over you and your household. In Jesus' name. How many received this today? In Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the house of God. Amen. I want you to, when 
by the time this evening ends, when you go home tonight, you're in the bus, you're walking home, you're in the car, would you just under your breath, you don't even know why you're singing it, this, and you begin to sing it. Tomorrow morning when you get up out of bed and it's a work day and you don't feel like getting up, just begin to sing, this mountain shall be removed in Jesus' name, amen. Have you enjoyed the ministry of Pastor Lawrence Cruz this weekend? And so I will not uh, prolong this meeting with another introduction because you've heard it already. I'm delighted that he's here. I'm delighted he's coming to preach the word. Uh, and I'm delighted that he's brought some friends with us. And his dear wife is here. Tammy, would you stand and say hi to everybody? Nice to have you with us today. God bless you. And Pastor Lawrence, I know there's other friends that you may want to make mention, and uh, we're delighted to have uh, friends with us from out of town. It's a joy to have you with us. Would you come and share the Word of God with us today? Would you put your hands together and welcome Pastor Lawrence Cruz? Thank you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Oh. Well, the people of God said praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. It's so good to be in God's house. Amen. You can tell my, my voice is a little hoarse. And uh, I got some good-looking folks right up here crowding in the front row. Pastor Will asked me to uh, introduce some. Well, you met the first lady, Tammy. Yeah, the first lady, that's right. We've been married for, it's 26 years. By the way, that's this month, just in case you're wondering, okay? That's right. You got to keep these ladies on the ball, right? 26 years this month. What do you know? It's amazing what you can get away with with a microphone, eh, my brother? I might get in trouble for that later, but that's okay. <laughs> and then, of course, we've got Jennifer Weston right here, and the, sitting beside the first lady of this house. Oh, the guest preacher at the women's do that's sold out, a sold out capacity crowd from Renee with two vowels, if not three, Sluice with two vowels. I was listening. <laughs> There's vowels everywhere in your name. That's right. And she says, as in, you're married to Jeff Weston, the 15-year-old? Listen, Pastor Will was the youth pastor to this lady's husband. So if there's anything gone wrong here, it's all this man's responsibility. <laughs> Listen, you know it. Man of God poured into a man of God. And then you were privileged to be also <laughs> brought into his life because Jeff needed the help. That's where we'll go. Praise the name of the Lord. Sean and Amy Turn are here, man and woman of God. This man called me this week, and I was on a northern Ontario tour uh, riding shotgun, assisting the western Ontario district men's ministry leader. So we went on a tour to bring life and see what God is doing, and I was invited to participate. So this whole week has been, okay, God, what are you doing? And we send people on mission all the time. This time it was my turn again, and I love it. And Sean called me, and uh, I was sitting in the foyer of, uh, which, do you remember, with New Sudbury? Sudbury or Timmins or somewhere way up there with, you know, we're all really close to where the Santa's workshop is, you know, somewhere around that area. And Sean just said, Pastor, and he talked, and he was asking, because remember we talked about being in submission to the Lord, and then when we're in submission to the Lord, it's easy to submit to one another. Come on, you remember this? All right, well, Sean just called, hey, with, you know, awesome. Pastor, God has put it on my heart. Would it be okay if uh, I had a small group and the purpose of that small group would be to learn how to prophesy under the leading of the Holy Spirit? How many of you know that's a good thing? Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Wouldn't you like to go to that small group? I can't wait to go. I'm going to learn something. No, praise the Lord. And so this is what God is doing. And I just bless you. Some of you maybe didn't even know that, but there's lots going on here. Well, we have another very handsome couple here. This is Sam and Don Horzempa. And what's really cool about their names is you don't know who could be Sam or who could be Don. <laughs> and for a long time, that could mess, mess you up, right? But this is Sam the guy and Don like the sunshine, Horzempa. And actually, it was nice to hear you singing. They've been away for too long, by the way, says your pastor. And it's very nice to have you back. And I heard you led and, and the report already going before you is that once again, it was amazing to have you lead. She also has a wonderful touch from the Lord. Renee, you would relate. And that's, uh, Renee, where'd you go? Yeah, 
Equally, that's what Don does week after week at our assembly, and for that we are thankful. Oh, right behind this guy is Murray. Now, you need to know, these two guys have been on vacation, and they were at the border. They were, they've been in the States for like three years, it felt like. <laughs> no, how long was it anyway? Five, five weeks, and three for Murray, and uh, we just love you, and it feels a whole lot longer. And they're on their way home. They haven't even gone home yet. They heard the Holy Ghost is doing the work, and they wanted to stop in and meet with the Holy Ghost. How about that? That's a good gig right there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And you can see, and then you know these people, Gary and Heather Cox, and they're, I like, they're assimilating some very good people into the Calvary crowd here, Pastor. I got to just tell you. Well, these were the people who were actually number two, I think, if not the, were you calling yourself the pioneers? You were the second within a month of the, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, the Teen Challenge Center for Women in Aurora. Ladies and gentlemen, right here. That's right. I think, I think, Renee, could we say founding directors? So close that uh, there was someone who were right at the very beginning, and it was just a short stint, and God called this couple. Gary had a, a succession of dreams. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble for this. Doesn't the Bible say that the old men will dream dreams? Oh, <laughs> you knew it. You knew it. You missed me, Gary. <laughs> Did you miss me? <laughs> for five minutes. Oh, <laughs> can you tell we have fun in our assembly? And Gary had these dreams, and he said to his wife, sweetheart, God's speaking to me. I keep on seeing us in ministry at Teen Challenge. And what do you know? I'm putting words in your mouth. It's true, but they sold everything as an in obedience to the Lord and left beautiful Perry Sound and moved down to that center for women that you are very familiar with in, the, in this assembly. And they went there and didn't even know if the water was going to work and they're the ones and had to go to the floor and all of this stuff. They left the comforts of home to go to faraway Aurora. What do you know? And praise God. Yeah, go ahead. Would you once again honor this man and woman of God? Praise the Lord. Honor all of you. Thank you so much for coming. I'm pleasantly surprised. And excuse me while I just have a visit with the people of God here from Calvary. Is that all right? But I bless you. And I know these good people here. Now I know. I hear. I'm sorry. Man, this is Kathy Sterling. Yes, the infamous Kathy Sterling. I've heard much about you. Attends this. Yeah. And uh, pours her life also equally well at the center, isn't it, for the Teen Challenge. Is that correct? Yeah. Praise the Lord. And are you involved in Teen Challenge too? No. You just look like our good friend Carla. That's enough. I told her every time I look at her, I'm going, Carla. Oh, sorry, that's not Carla. And then I act like I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Well, maybe I should get my sermon notes. That might help. Praise the Lord. Are you ready for the word this evening? Praise God. How many of you remember we, we talked, we began a message that God laid on my heart real time while I was here? Is that our God is willing. How many of you know our God is willing? Amen? You know what? He's willing to move your mountain and cast it into the sea. Praise the Lord. Pastor, as you were saying, everything alive in my spirit. I'll tell you what we're learning as well. Hey, we've been given authority. I said, we have authority. We can speak to the mountain and say, mountain, get lost and be cast into the sea. Do I have a witness in this house tonight? Praise the Lord. So rise up, man of God, woman of God, rise up. You got a mountain in your way? Well, tell the mountain to get out of the way because there's a new sheriff in town. It's a man of God filled with the Holy Ghost. It's a woman of God who knows her place in the Spirit. And mountain, you've been an obstacle in the way for too long. Be removed in the name of Jesus. Our God is willing. Our God is willing. Oh, the leper came and said, if you're willing, if I'm willing, you know that I am. And he touched the leper. How many of you know the leper was made whole in Jesus' name? Praise God. Well, then we went to the Great Commission. Eventually, we got there in Mark 16. He said, preach the gospel. And we talked about what the gospel is, right? Jesus hung on the cross. He was the Great Commission. He was, he was buried. He was laid in the tomb, and he didn't just swoon there. He wasn't just out for the count, you know, concussed. No, he died. Come on, everybody say he died. And why did he die? Because he willingly declared, Father, it is finished. And he surrendered his spirit. 
And they placed him in a tomb where dead people are placed because he was dead. And he died in order that he would take all of my sin. Praise God. And all of our sin. Come on, the people said amen. Oh, how many of you know that before (laughs) Jesus did this before I was born? Jesus did that before you were born, true? And you know what that tells me? That every sin I ever committed was in the future. And you know what that tells me? That every sin that I'll ever be involved in in the future is already taken care of by the fact that Jesus died for our sins. Come on, someone give Him praise in this place. Be encouraged. Oh, so that, oh, therefore, oh, if God's got us covered, I guess we'll just go ahead, eh, Pastor, and live how we want? Uh, no, not, not if it involves sin. But I am going to live how I want. Here's how I want to live. I want to serve the one who took all of my sins away. And he doesn't force me, but he allows me. Oh, he doesn't force me. He sets us free to live the way He has called us to live. That's my boy. I'm fashioning the image of Jesus Christ in my boy. Oh, that's my daughter. Oh, she's becoming so much like Jesus, just the way I intended. How can you say that, Pastor? Because all, say all, all our sins are gone forever. Come on, someone say your amen. It's the gospel. And when we pronounce it, just look, feel the power. What happens? Oh, devils. You think devils can't touch this? Devils are fleeing now. You know what? Oh, no. Oh, no. It's Richmond Hill Pentecostal Church. They're at it again. All those Holy Ghost filled people, they're making declarations run for the hills because Richmond Hill is on the move in Jesus' name. Come on. If you're going to praise Him, praise Him. It's the truth. What I'm saying is true. You are the head and you are not the tail. Do I have a witness? So let's rise up. Come on. Put your shoulders back. Square up, man of God. And hold your head high. Because you're on a march and the devil is fleeing from you. Come on. It wasn't just long ago that the Lord reminded me. He says, you know why there's opposition to us, Jen? You know this. You know why there's opposition? Because we're advancing, praise God. We are the ones that the devil is opposing. He's saying, oh, you got to stop this Christian. You know what we say? Out of my way. And we go for a stroll because everywhere we go, we establish that the kingdom of God is at hand. And the devil hates it. Of course he'll try to oppose you. But in the authority of the Holy Spirit, he can't touch you. And that's what we did, and I, I did it this morning. We went there, and so there was a woman here, and I, I realized that she was no longer with a husband in her home. I said, man of God, take your place, and if it's a woman's place because your husband's not there, you do it anyway, but you can there stand in prayer. As I just illustrate, as though your kids are there, you can pray that canopy over your children and declare, me and my household, we will serve the Lord. You mountain of doubt, get lost. You mountain of insecurity, get lost. You stronghold of sin get lost because you have no place here i'm a man of god and i declare this mountain of of a lack of salvation and unbelief shall be removed in jesus name praise the lord and so we preach the gospel that christ has paid for our sins and we make the invitation would you like to know jesus as your savior If today you're here and you're not certain if you'd go to heaven, oh, pastor, if I died right now, I don't know. Then right now where you are, do this. Jesus, I'm sorry. I repent of my sins. Come into my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. How many of you know that before you can get it out of your mouth, Holy Ghost will rush to you and he'll write your name down in the Lamb's book of life. Can someone give him praise tonight? praise am i preaching the truth is this the gospel this is the gospel you say pastor oh that sounds too easy yeah easy for us because of the brutal hard price that jesus christ paid for you and i oh he paid a hard 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 price but he did it because oh how he loves you and me he loves us 
and his arms are ever open wide. And he said, oh, you believe? You've just had your name written down? Well, guess what? Let us now, from the second that you are filled with the Holy Earth, that, that your name is written down. And it was you, Pastor Will, who, who in yesteryear, we had a conversation and it lodged in my spirit like other things. There's no reason we were talking. There's no reason, Pastor Lawrence, that, that once a person gets born again, that they ought not to instantly be filled with the Holy Ghost right away. There's no reason. There does not need to be a delay. Oh, thank you, Lord. You're my Savior. Now come and be filled to overflowing. Oh, let your banks be overflowing with the very presence of the third person of the Trinity. His name is Holy Spirit, and he longs to fill us, not just a bit, not a tickle, but to overflow us in Jesus' name. And there's no need to wait. And the Bible says that everyone who believes the gospel, at least four things will happen. One of them is speaking in other tongues. Richmond Hill, I want to tell you something in Jesus' name. It is my firm conviction. It is my tested conviction of 30 years full-time service and more than that as a follower of Christ, 42 years tell you this. Speaking in tongues is every bit 100% related to being filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And when God says to those who believe the gospel, they will speak in other tongues. I submit to you tonight in this sermon, that is equal to they will be filled with the Holy Spirit. And here's how you'll know they will speak in other tongues. You know what else they'll do? They'll drive out demons. How many of you know there's too many demons living inside of people? They ought to get back into the pigs where they belong and jump off a cliff if they need to. But they need to get out of our sons and daughters and their girlfriends and boyfriends in the name of Jesus. And you know what? You know who? You know how we take care of it? Men stand up. Women stand up. And they say, not on my watch. I'm a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm doing some commanding around here. Demons, get out of here. Pastor, what are you talking about? It's the job description of who? Believers. Let me ask you. Come on, wave at me. Any believers in the house tonight? Praise God. Oh, call the pastor. Yeah, do what you want. But but just do me a favor. Please tell me tonight you hear it's our privilege to tell the devil where to go and to, and to say, that's it. Forget it. I've, I've had enough of him dominating. It's time for me to have my way in Jesus Christ. Amen. There's these things that happen. The sick are going to be healed. How? How's that going to happen? Oh, believers are going to respond to the gospel and they're going to say, oh, I can help you with that. In Jesus name, be healed. Oh, my goodness, what just happened? That's funny you should ask. Jesus just happened. Have you ever met him? Would you like to know? Would you like to bow your heart to him? Oh, my goodness, why would I not serve such a benevolent, kind God? Who does that? You, me, what? Believers in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do I have a witness in the house? Praise the name of the Lord. You know what else they do? You heard it. There's divine protection, right? Handle the snakes, all that. Pastor and I were talking about it. Don't do it. People who think you're supposed to handle the snake, some pe they're still dying because they're doing it, literally. So I just repeat. I repeat, do not buy a snake. It's talking about divine protection. Don't drink poison. But if for some reason you're on mission for the Lord, that's why you can go where he calls you. God, what's going to happen to me? Nothing, thanks, because you're my boy, and I got you covered. I got angels on your right, angels on your left. I got undergird. I got, I, I'll tell you what, you walk into that place, and <laughs> every unclean spirit is going to shriek because you came there. You don't have anything to fear because I got you covered when you're on mission for the Lord. Someone say your amen. That's what happens when what? When we believe. So can we go to the speaking in tongues? I want to talk about this on this Holy Spirit weekend, Pastor. And I, oh, and I love it. You say, it's not, we don't earn this. We don't work it up. 
We don't have to lather some atmosphere. That's flesh, flesh, flesh. In Jesus' name, we crucified the flesh. Amen? What we do is we yield. We receive. We just yield to a most beautiful, benevolent, kind God. And I mention it, so I'm going to follow uh, through with what I said. I want to talk to us tonight about four different types of tongues. Did you catch that? Where we went is that there's a, there's a gospel and four things. One of them is speaking in tongues. So I want to just kind of expand that a little bit tonight. If you're kind of thinking, like, oh, okay, that's, let's hang that somewhere. Four kinds of tongues. Number one is tongues is assigned to unbelievers. And I see that our, my sister is here and you said, oh, this is going to be good to learn. I want you to learn this. Watch this. If you're taking notes, it's 1 Corinthians 14, 22. Listen to this. Tongues, I'm reading the Bible now in 1 Corinthians 14, 22. Tongues are assigned, therefore, not to those who believe, but tongues are a sign for unbelievers. Okay, I just got to tell you something. If I've heard it once, I've heard it at least a hundred times. And people, no way, no, no, no. The Bible says you ought not to speak in tongues because if an unbeliever comes in, he's going to think you're kooky. And then they open the Bible, which we are also going to see in a second, and they say, see, it's right here. Now watch this. The same Bible just said to you and me, in 1 Corinthians 14, 22, tongues are a sign. And they are for unbelievers. So on the first glance, you can sit there and say, people even said this, see, that book, you can't even trust it. In one silly chapter, it contradicts itself. Unless you understand this. There's more than one kind of tongue. How cool is that? I want, Pastor, I owe to God that we the people, this is not hard, but I promise you, this is going to set some people free where the devil comes in and has a heyday. And what he does is he tricks people in order that they'll shut up speaking in tongues because the devil knows there's incredible power when we pray in the Holy Spirit, which is what God has invited us to do. Oh. You see... Tongues for unbelievers, they occur when the Holy Spirit transcends our intellect and gives us the ability to speak another language of this earth. But listen, specifically a language that the speaker doesn't know how to speak from our own experience or education. Did you catch that? So it would be as though, when I'm referring to imagine this, if all of a sudden the Spirit came on me and I began to speak Chinese. And I'm glad I don't know how to speak Chinese. I've never learned it. Does anybody here know how to speak Chinese? God bless you, sir. You do. So if I did, it would be, listen, it would be just like me now not knowing how and you going, oh, my goodness. Where did you learn such amazing, perfect Chinese? Pastor, is that in the Bible? Oh, yeah. Any Pentecostals here? On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost was poured out. Come on, let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 5. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. Say every nation. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment. What is going on? Here it is. Because each one, these are unbelievers, heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, etc. It's pretty close, actually. Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts, okay, Cretans and Arabs, we get the picture, like every flipping nation on the planet, it seems like. Not quite, but you get it. What does it say? We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own language. Now, if I was the devil, I would lie to you. And say, you should never speak in tongues again. Because that was only for 2,000 years ago. But good news. 
I'm not the devil. So what I am doing is telling you in the name of Jesus. Look at me, every one of you. Speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives you utterance. Can someone say amen? Go ahead. It belongs in the house of God today. It belongs on the streets today. What? So that people would hear. What people? Unbelievers would hear the wonderful, magnificent praise of an amazing God. And they would hear it and say, oh my goodness, God must be in this place. Because I know that you don't speak Chinese. And that was perfect Chinese. There must be a God. And we say, absolutely. Are you hearing me, church? Are you hearing that tongues belong today? Are you getting it that the devil has twisted too many people for so long? And even the church, we've become timid. We say that's not for today. we got wonderful, godly people who even say, no, 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 that's not for today. I just want, can I do it? I'm just going on record. It is for today in Jesus' name. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Because we're entitled to our opinion too. And if I don't mind saying, we're right. <laughs> okay? It's as simple as that. I want you to know, did that just happen 2,000 years ago? Listen to this. I know a friend from Huntsville. Pastor Randy Cox's wife. Her, her name is Debbie. She was in a service just like this. And she began just to speak out in other tongues. She had no idea what language she was speaking. This is in Ontario in Huntsville. Pastor Will used to live there. And a, a man in the congregation came right up and said, oh, my goodness, I don't know what language is. Where, when did you learn that language? She said, what language? And the guy was like, what are you talking about? She explained that it was tongues, and the man gave his heart to Jesus Christ because she was proclaiming the most amazing wonder of God in perfect language, his native tongue. And the unbeliever who was visiting was blown away. And we got so many people, even amongst young ministers, saying, oh, we can't offend the unbeliever. Well, that's not offensive. That's very miraculous. That's what I would call it. And it brings glory to a most holy God. Can someone? would say your amen. I think, yeah, go ahead and praise him in Jesus' name. That's what we need to do. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. I want. Thank you, Jen. Praise the Lord. Well, that's number one. Number two, tongues for interpretation. The second type of tongue is also for public ministry. So this is, oh, I just love it. I just take it away. The first one was for public ministry, where an unbeliever is in a public service. It's so contrary to what we've heard so often. This one is also public. The second type of tongue is for public ministry. Unlike tongues as a sign, these tongues are heavenly language that are not spoken anywhere on the earth. Tongues for interpretation are the type of tongues Paul referred to as a spiritual gift when he said to other, this is 1 Corinthians 12, verse 10, to other different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Since these tongues are not the languages of this earth, here it is, they have to be interpreted. Hmm. Praise the Lord. So these languages were not understood. We get what's, this, what's happening here. Any expression of tongues that falls under tongues for interpretation, listen, should always come with an interpretation. Can I hear your amen or do I need to repeat that? Yeah. How many of you are with me? Are you following this? Okay, good, good. Without this interpretation, then the church can't be built up. And this tongue is exclusively given. Why would someone speak in tongues and then have someone interpret? Here's the reason. So the people of God would be built up, edified, strengthened. Oh, thank you for that word. A message in an unknown tongue. And someone else under the same leading of the Holy Spirit interprets the message. And then goes, oh my goodness. Yeah, that was for me. And I've been in countless meetings where one message and one interpretation in a room like this so many individuals say, that was for me. That's the sovereign God, because he knows exactly what to say and how to say it. Can someone say your amen? You see, it's 1 Corinthians 
12, verse 28 to 30. Let's look at this in context. God has appointed these in the church. You'll get it first, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, administrations, variety of gifts. Here it comes. Are all apostles? It's a rhetorical question. What do you think the answer is? I'm going to help you. Right. What's the answer? Are all apostles? Right. Are all prophets? Come on, say it out. Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Ah, see, I got it. Ah, ha, ha, I got you. You just said it. We're talking about a different kind of tongue. Come on, someone preach with me here. Come on, tell me you're getting this. In this context, we're talking about the beautiful display and arrangement of the gifts of the Spirit of God, severally as He wills, says one translation. In other words, God gives some gifts to you, some to you. He uses the analogy of the body. Aren't you glad that we're all not thumbs? I mean, thumbs are good, but if everybody was a thumb, we'd all be hitchhiking everywhere. Like we, This would just be incredible. Listen, no, <laughs> listen, we all need our bodies. We, we, come on, you get it. We cannot, this is what God is saying. There's different gifts that are given, but it doesn't mean that we can't all speak in tongues in this context. You see, Paul explains the difference between the two types of public tongues. Let me read it. Therefore, tongues are for a sign. Follow, if, pardon me, it's 1 Corinthians 14, 22. Tongues are for a sign. Not to those who believe, but unbelievers. Therefore, if the whole church comes together in one place and all speak with tongues and there come in those who are uninformed or unbelievers, will they not say that you are out of your mind? OK, well, and that's the one I always hear. But if we don't understand that there's different types of tongues, you might think Paul completely contradicted himself. He says, first, he says, tongues are for a sign for the unbeliever. Then in the very next verse, we read, if you speak with tongues, unbelievers will think you're out of your mind. But with a better understanding of the four distinct tongues, we can see that Paul is writing about two different types. Come on to 1 Corinthians 14, 18. Friends, we're in a little bit of school here, but this is important. I just want to check it, check the oil, make sure we're still doing it. How many of you are with the preacher so far tonight? Amen? Good. This is good. To, this is necessary. Because, you see, we're responding to the Great Commission. What's that? We said yes. Lord said, hey, I want you to go. How many of you have given God your yes? You say, I'm willing to go. All right, well, this is what we need to be able to teach the people that we interact with. And when we bring them to Jesus, they say, I got a question. I, you know what? Some of you, this question is going to come up here like this week. You say, I am so glad you asked because I'm armed and dangerous, and I've got the answer right now. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 14, 18. <clears throat> Paul, same writer. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. What? I would rather speak five words, though, with my understanding in the church that I may teach others also than 10,000 words in a tongue. It's really quite simple. I'm speaking to you now. I'm preaching a sermon. And in case you haven't realized it, I'm not speaking in tongues. How many of you knew that? Okay, good crowd, smart people. This is all Paul's talking about. It would be so foolish if I just got up here and all I did was speak in tongues and you're all sitting there. What's he doing? He's speaking in tongues. Oh, great. When's that going to be over? Because it would just be so foolish. But that's what he's saying. That's all he's saying. It's so simple. We don't throw away tongues altogether. We, we manifest them appropriately to bring glory to God, to build people up, to lead unchurched people to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Come on, if you're with me so far, let me hear your amen. Praise the Lord. It's pretty simple. Here it is. If a public tongue is used, it must be interpreted. Otherwise, it would better simply be communicate in a known language. It's as simple as that. We don't leave anything mysterious in a public setting. You speak in tongues, interpret it. That doesn't work for you? 
can prophesy in the native tongue of the people that you are serving. Clear, crystal clear. Well, number three. Tongues for personal prayer. Now, even before we go there, how many of you already know about speaking in tongues for personal prayer? Anybody ever do that? Praise the Lord. Me too. Let me tell you, in preparation for this weekend, studying and fasting, I was challenged to set a timer and pray every day on purpose, just in tongues. And for me, a good appropriate time is 20 minutes. I set it for 20 minutes and I actually time myself. Most often I'm on my knees and then I check into it. It's like, man, it's only been five minutes at first. It's like, wow, that was a long time. And then you get a groove going on later. It's like, wow, the timer's going off already. Come on. But I'll tell you what, I did it on purpose to say, hey, Cruz, pray in the spirit. And the mo this, is, this is just a testimony. The most incredible thing happened. Even as I was praying in the spirit at the very same time, I don't think it. God was bringing thoughts to my mind. And my mind was every bit as active at the time I was speaking in other languages in prayer. And I don't think it. I knew that I was moving mountains, Pastor Will, as I was calling out to God in other languages. And are you ready for this? The devil can't touch that, praise God. The devil can't touch it. Go ahead and praise him, church. Come on. Oh, that's the personal. What are you talking about? Well, don't take my opinion for it. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. Come on, say, my spirit prays. Say it one more time. My spirit prays. How many want to be strong in the inner man? Come on, does anyone want to be strengthened on the inside? Are you ready? Here's how you do it. Pray in tongues. Pray in the Holy Spirit. And if I was the devil, I'd say to you, oh, that's just for 2,000 years ago. And sadly, so many people are just taking that bait. And it's like they're caught on a fishing line and they're listening and the devil's reeling them all in and saying, oh, no, no, no. Oh, that's offensive. That's not very sensitive to a world that needs Jesus. Oh, don't you do that now. Oh, if I was the devil, I'd do it too. Because I'm telling you, tongues are a weapon and it destroys the kingdom of darkness in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. My spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. In other words, I don't know what I'm saying. And yet, I'm just like, God, how come I'm feeling so strong on the inside? Because the Bible says it's building me up. <laughs> so what's the conclusion then? I'll pray with the spirit. And I'll also pray with the understanding. Come on now. I'll sing with the Spirit. And I'll sing with the understanding. Any of you ever sing in tongues? Oh, I do. And we're going to do it a little bit later. And we're all going to stand on this line. This is what I believe the Lord showed me, Pastor. We're going to sing that song about how great God is. I think it's called God is Great. <laughs> Sorry. We'll get to it. We'll figure it out. Watch this. I'll make it really easy. It was one of the songs that Val did, okay? All right. How about that? And we're going to be on this line and together in concert in unity. Say unity. We're all going to lift our voices in English. And I'm gonna, then we're going to say, and, uh, under my leading or the pastor's leading, it, a pastor has asked me to lead this, so I will. I'm going to say, okay, friends, I want you to yield now. No more English. And we're going to turn right in, and we're going to begin to sing with all of our might in the spirit in unknown tongues, and we are going to just bring glory and honor to God. You think you're feeling good now? You wait. You wait for a few moments while the spirit just builds your inner man. Do I have a witness in this house in Jesus' name? Praise the name of the Lord. Wow. Praise God. <laughs> I heard other guys say, I think I'm going to get the tape of this. I'm going to get this message. I'm enjoying it, Pastor. <laughs> The first two types of tongues are for public expression. A message from God to men. Tongues for a sign are intended to reach out and minister to the unbeliever. 
tongues for interpretation are intended to minister to the believer. Do you hear that? Isn't that amazing? The first two type of public tongues, one's for the unbeliever and one's for the believer. God cares about everybody. It's not either or, it's both and. And in the verses that we, Paul introduces the third type of tongues, tongues for personal prayer. He's no longer talking about public ministry. It's you and God, one on one. He's talking about tongues to be used for private purposes. And this form is for personal edification in prayer. I love it. Paul specifically states that we can pray with the understanding, which for me would mean praying in English. Or we can pray with the spirit, which means praying in an unknown language. He also declares that we can sing either way as well. Earlier in 1 Corinthians, we read, he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to whom? Come on, to God. That's right. What is speaking in tongues for personal prayer? It's private interaction between God and the one praying. And its purpose is to strengthen the one who's praying. Hey, do you ever get battle weary? You ever say, oh God, I don't know if I'm going to make it through the day. I'm glad you came to see me. I've got a some script. Let me write the script for that. That's right. Once a day to start, I want you to set the timer. Let's start with 10 minutes. This 10 minutes, set your timer. I pray in the Holy Spirit. Come back and see me in a week. And we'll have another exam. But I'm guessing that you're going to feel stronger in the inner man. And that battle that you've been waging, you know what? It's not going to seem nearly as big as it used to. Because you're going to be so much bigger. And you're going to start taking authority over that battle in the name of Jesus Christ. Jude 20 and 21. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God. Jude states that when we pray in the Holy Spirit, in tongues, that's what I mean, we build ourselves up. But when we speak in tongues for interpretation to believers in the church, we build up the church. God desires both because both are so important. If you're with me, let me hear your amen. amen. Number four. Tongues for intercession. Go to Romans 8, verse 26. Would you do that? 26 and 27. We read from the Bible. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. My goodness, stop again. No wonder the devil wants to mute his, the people of God speaking in tongues. It's so clear. Because it's the Holy Spirit who helps us when? When we're weak. Oh my. For we don't know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. How many of you believe that the Holy Spirit knows what God's will is for your life? Uh, just in case we've forgotten, He is God, so He does know. So here's how it works. God, the Holy Spirit, knows what Father wants for His kids. And so He says, let me help you with that. I'm going to give you the words to pray, and it's going to be exactly what Heavenly Father wants for your life. So go ahead and pray what I have birthed in your spirit. It will be in agreement with the will of God, and I tell you on the authority of the Bible, it will come to pass. It's as simple as that. And of course, the devil says, oh, you can't do that. Listen, we are not listening to the devil. We are the people of God, and we say, yes, we can do that. And not only can we, I will do that tonight in Jesus' name. Is there anybody with me in this house? We're going to take authority and be filled with the Spirit. And some of you say, Pastor, I'm not sure about it. Ready? 
Just trust me. Just do it with me. Take a leap of faith. I did it, and he changed my life. He took a boy who said yes, who thought he was going to be a dentist. God filled me with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And then I quickly said, Lord, uh, I'm just reading your word here. And if this Bible is true, and I know that it is, I'm talking about a call of God to ministry. If this Bible is true, and it really is, did I mention to you it was after I had just been filled with the Holy Spirit? I don't think, come on, I need your amen. Did you hear that? God filled me with the Holy Ghost, and now I'm reading the Word in a different way. And I'm seeing it. I'm saying, oh, God, if this is true, all I can do is give you my yes. Lord, whatever you want for my life, you have my yes. And the reason why I'm here in May 2019, because when I was a 14-year-old boy, I gave God my yes, and he's taken me on the ride of my life. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, I'm called of God. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, and he told believers to go and make disciples. Are there any believers in the house tonight? You and I are equally commissioned. And in case we haven't got anything this weekend, we can't do anything on our own might. We can't do anything of our own power. But by the Spirit of God, look out, devil, there's a new sheriff in town. Praise God. This is the word of the Lord. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 39 and 40. Therefore, brethren, this is it. This is the summary of it all. Earnestly desire to prophesy. And do not, say do not. Do not forbid to speak with tongues. Let everything be done decently and in order. And the people of God said amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh. We're going to wind this down, I promise. People at Calvary, they're here, they're going to say, oh yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> Go to Luke chapter 4 and verse 1. Come on, if you're with me, say, I'm with you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Tonight, tonight, all over this place, you're going to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives you utterance. And the people of God said, Amen. Come on, how many of you are willing to get ready for a deluge of the Holy Ghost? How many are ready to receive a fresh anointing? How many are ready to receive a fresh infilling of the Spirit of the Most High God? Amen? How many of you are ready to be used of God to prophesy, to speak in other tongues, to move mountains, and to do whatever it is that God wants to do in us and through us? Amen? Is there anybody willing to do that? Praise the name of the Lord. Well, I want to tell you, as you're looking at Luke chapter 4, verse 1, is that we can never have too much of the Holy Spirit. Can someone say your amen? Now, come on, as we land this plane, you preach with me. Je the Bible says in Luke 4, verse 1, Jesus, say Jesus, was full of the Holy Spirit. Okay, I got a quiz. Ready? Uh-oh, test time. Here's the, who was full of the Holy Spirit? Good answer, correct. How many of you think that if Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit, we ought to also be filled with the Holy Spirit? This is not hard math, people. This is very simple. And if Jesus, if it was good enough for him, then it's good enough for me. Praise the Lord. So our Lord, our Savior, <laughs> the Lord was full of the Holy Spirit. He left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. How many of you know sometimes the people of God still have to find their way into the valleys and the wilderness? We wouldn't go there on our own, but the Lord has a work to do in our character, so He takes us into the wilderness. Have I got a witness in this place? Come on now. Where for 40 days He was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them He was hungry. I'll just add in my translation, I guess so. 40 days, no food. How instructive for us to realize this, people of God, that Jesus, the Son of God, was filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Did you hear the preacher? Some people, they're full of other stuff. I'll tell you what, some people are full of themselves. Some people, have you met them? They're filled with anger. How many of you have ever seen them? 
You can see it on their countenance. Some people are filled with rage. Some are filled with jealousy. Sad to say, some people are even filled with evil, Pastor. I'll tell you, Jesus, though, none of those things. What's Jesus full of? He is filled with God, the very Spirit of the Most High God. Our Lord was overflowing with the third person of the Trinity. Can someone say amen? It's in the Bible. That's why I believe it. You know what that means? Jesus, say Jesus, is under the Spirit's control. That's how he lives. Calvary, Calvary, Richmond Hill. This is how he lives. What am I telling you? Look at this. You think this is true? Easy for us to wrap our mind around. The, neither the world, the flesh, or the devil controls Jesus. Come on, if you believe it, say amen. Only the power from on high controls Jesus. The devil tempts him, but to no avail. Praise God. How many of you know when the devil tempted Jesus, Jesus did not give in? Can I hear your amen? Jesus won the battle. It was to no avail. Divine fullness to the soul is what a sumptuous meal is to the body. I had one this afternoon. He doesn't need to turn stones into bread. Listen, because the Spirit of God satisfies him already. You know why there's so much flesh at work even in the church sometimes? Because there's an absence of the Spirit at work. And if I was the devil, I'd close the valve to the Holy Spirit in order that flesh can go everywhere and make it difficult for the workers and the ministers. And they're saying, I can't handle this. I want to quit. Some people are doing that. The devil goes, oh, I got it. Just whatever you do, turn the valve off to the Holy Spirit. Because those people, when they're filled with the Holy Spirit, they want nothing to do with the flesh. And then all heaven breaks loose. That's what's going on. What does it mean to be full of the Holy Spirit? This question is important to Luke, the doctor. Remember him? Because he's the only gospel writer to note this about Jesus. What? When our Lord leaves the Jordan where he was baptized, he returns with the full measure of the Holy Spirit. His rich, abundant endowment from heaven is like a river overflowing its banks. Someone preach with me here. It means that he is miraculously guided. Anybody ever need the guidance of the Lord? It means that Jesus was miraculously enabled. How many of you need the enabling of the Holy Spirit? I do. My hands are up. He was anointed to overcome the devil and to begin his public ministry. Who are we talking about? The Son of the Most High God was filled with the Spirit. And upon being filled, he then began to call others into the kingdom of God and serve his father with him how much more the frail people here in this assembly tonight if Jesus needed the spirit so did we what am I telling you the spirit descends on Jesus before his temptation the spirit descends upon Jesus before he starts ministry and Luke shows that this is very important in his life. He's not only full of the Holy Spirit, but our Lord was led by the Holy Spirit. And then he returns to Galilee. Listen to this. In the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible says. And his victorious life and powerful ministry is an outflow of the spiritual anointing in his life. If you believe it, may I hear your amen. This is our Lord and Savior. And I want to tell you, we can never have too much of the Holy Spirit. You see, living in spiritual fullness, men and women of God, takes precedence over satisfying the needs of our flesh. Did you hear that? God's design for you and me is that we would be filled to overflowing with the Spirit of the Most High God. And anything less than that is less than what God intended you and I to be. God wants us to be filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. This is His intention. And after the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus, His Father declared, when after he was filled, 
father declared, you're my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. And Jesus lived his life on earth as a person saturated with the spirit of the most high God. Did I tell you that Jesus lived on earth as a person who was saturated with the Holy Ghost? Can you say saturated? And I tell you tonight, in the name of Jesus, God wants to do the same for you and I tonight in this place. If I've got a witness, would you give a shout of praise unto your God? And Hallelujah. Bless your holy name. Musicians, would you come quickly? Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to tell you what we're going to do tonight. We are going to be filled with the Spirit. If you believe it, may I hear your amen. Let me tell you, I want to show you this illustration. It's so simple. I believe it's so simple. How many of you have ever been to Niagara Falls? You've been to Niagara Falls? That's good. Congratulations. Did you get engaged there? <laughs> it used to be the honeymoon capital of the world. I don't think it is anymore. <laughs> it's Richmond Hill. What do you know? Isn't that? How about that? So this is a bottle of water. Excuse me for a second. Now, how many of you know that baptism means to be fully submersed? Come on, does anybody know that? Amen. So that's what it means, right? It was like someone who was going to dye a pair of pants or a sock or a garment of clothes. They would fully submerge the whole do uh, garment in order that when they lifted it out, the whole garment wouldn't, w would be an, a brand new color. It would be saturated. Baptism was totally immersed. I want to just come with me and suggest to you that standing under Niagara Falls would equally be full submersion. How many of you think that would be true? Are, are you with me on that? Okay, watch this. I just believe the Lord just made this so simple. See this bottle? There's no lid on it, right? Do you want me to prove it to you? Oh, I so want to do this right now. I just said, uh, no, <laughs> I think I want to prove it right over here. No, I wouldn't do that. You speak Chinese. I can't do that. <laughs> I saw you. So, so this bottle's got no lid on it. Could I, could I put some more? I'm helping you. Could I put some more water in here? It's not a trick question. I could, right? I can also get some out. Excuse me a minute. Mm -hmm. mm. Niagara Falls. How many, how much, like, what do you think? Do you think this bottle is big by comparison to Niagara Falls? Smart people, you are. I agree. Very small in comparison. Look at that. With all of the millions of liters of water that are pouring over those falls, Millions. I don't know the time frame, but every regular time period. It would be quite quick, right? With this lid on, I could put this bottle under the falls. And you know what? Not one drop of water would get inside. I'm going to submit to you the simplicity of the Lord Jesus Christ at work in this house right now. I'm teaching you how to be filled with the Spirit of God. Come on, Christians, you begin to pray with me already. Just pray because it's so easy. Are you ready? God, forgive us for making it complicated. If anyone ever made it complicated, we undo that right now. Come on, someone agree with me in this place. Even with the strength of Niagara Falls and the millions of leaders that are crashing over, with this lid on, not one more drop of water is going to get in. But. When I take the lid off. I said, when I take the lid off. How many of you know? Go. Done. How many of you know it would be filled? How long would it take to fill this small little, huh? How long would it take? Could we even quantify it? I'm sure we could, but it would be pretty hard. 
Anybody want to hazard a guess at instantaneously? And then do you think it would be filled again and it would be being filled over and over and over again as it just was being held under the awesome wonder of the world called Niagara Falls? How many of you know there would be an overflowing of the banks, as it were, and the leaders upon leader would again and again and again and again and again would be refilling and filling and filling and filling and filling and filling and and there would be an endless supply of being filled with the water of Niagara Falls. Is anyone here in the preacher today. This bottle represents you and me. And if you think Niagara Falls is powerful, I want to introduce you to a man named the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit. Amen. Give him praise in this place. And he is far more powerful and far more abundant than even Niagara Falls. So what do we got to do? Take the lid off. Open up to God, my brother. Guess what? I can't do that for you. Pastor Will can't do that. Nobody is supposed to do that. You know who does it for you? You do. Is there anybody in this place? You're ready to have a drink, not of this water, but of the beautiful, fresh, living water that will emanate, come from your innermost being. He's called the person of the Holy Ghost. Is there anyone thirsty tonight for a drink? If you're thirsty, stand to your feet, would you, all over this place? In the name of Jesus Christ, do you remember any song?